When I first heard that Infinity Ward was making a new Call of Duty game, I was kind of skeptical. But when I heard it was a reboot of the Modern Warfare series, I was kind of excited. If we're going to be honest, I don't think Infinity Ward, Treyarch, and Sledgehammer have made a good Call of Duty game in this generation. Each game they put out has been mediocre to decent at best. The last Call of Duty game to be said in modern time was Call of Duty Ghosts, and that game was pretty bad. Every Call of Duty game since 2010 has had to compete against other games and franchises like Halo and Battlefield. But this is the first Call of Duty game since the original Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2 that they haven't had to compete against any other games or franchises. Activision pretty much ruined Call of Duty as a brand for some people. By adding loot boxes, microtransactions, and making each of their games pay to win, it definitely left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. They cared more about what was making money than the people who are buying their games. Modern Warfare is set to right some of their wrongs. Is this the Call of Duty game everyone has been waiting for? In this review, I will be breaking down everything starting with the campaign, multiplayer, and then Spec Ops. So first things first, this game is gorgeous. This has to be one of the best second Call of Duty games I've seen this generation. The lighting, the character models, and the attention to detail is far more superior compared to its past entries. The way the light reflects off of the weapons and how the smoke comes out whenever you fire it, it's pretty cool if you ask me. The sound design is better than Battlefield in a lot of areas too. None of the guns sound the same, each gun fires and sounds drastically different from the last. Even with the suppressor on, the gun is still pretty loud. I honestly can't believe how Infinity Ward went all out in the graphics and sound department. The way the weapons are reloaded are pretty authentic and amazing too. You can see how much ammo you have in the magazine whenever you reload it. Now, it may not be the best second game out, but it's by far the best second Call of Duty game we've got in this generation. It's truly something to marvel at. And I highly recommend if you're on PC to play it maxed out because it is drop dead gorgeous. Now, as for the actual campaign, it's one of the best stories ever told and written in a Call of Duty game. It's easy to follow and the plot isn't all over the place compared to the last entries. My only issue with the story is how it's told. Instead of showing how the war started or how this character came to be, they decided to put a flashback in the middle of the story instead of the beginning of the game. It would have made more sense from a story and a gameplay perspective if they would have done it that way. Also in the flashback, you meet a younger Captain Price. Throughout most of the campaign, Price is already a well-established soldier. Other than that, the story is well written and well made and I honestly would recommend people playing it a few times through. At times, the game does feel like you're watching a movie. Obviously, you can tell where they got their inspirations from. There is a mix of 13 hours, Zero Dark Thirty, and Active Valor, which isn't bad to say, but you can see where they got their inspirations from. It's not like the past entries where you have explosions going off every minute or every second of the game. This story feels more grounded in reality and there are a lot of quiet moments in it too. A good example of this are the house raids. There are around two or three missions where you raid a few places or a few houses or a certain section. They have to be some of the most intense moments that I have ever had in a Call of Duty game. It felt like you were actually in this person's shoes. It was quiet, dark, and you had to rely on your teammates and the environment around you. A good example of this is the audio. Again, the sound design in this game is phenomenal and it's just breathtaking at times. Um, not only that, it also makes you think before you shoot. It keeps you guessing as you progress throughout the building raiding different rooms. People will start shooting you through doors and walls and they'll even use other people as uh, cover and they'll shoot you and right after you shoot the person with the gun, the person might, you know, drop down and, and, and pick the gun up from, from that person and try to shoot you back. And in a lot of cases, it makes it even harder for you to shoot back, so you have to be careful when raiding these rooms. It was very tactical in a sense. It reminded me a lot of Ghost Recon or the early Ghost Recon games. Another good thing about this are the characters in the game. Other than Captain Price, there are three main characters you play as, Fada, Alex, and Kyle. Alex is a CIA operative, Kyle is a member of the British SAS um, who works under Price, and Fada is a rebel leader. 
Now, Infinity War does take its time to not only introduce you to these characters, but also makes you invest in them. In a lot of places, I cared a lot about Fada, I cared a lot about Alex and Kyle because each of them were working together and working for a common goal. Another good thing about the story is there really isn't a real villain. Most COD games in the past have had a big bad villain, like they wanted to end the world or they wanted to do something, and it was just cliche. In this game, the villain has a reason for what they are doing. Even though you don't agree with them, you see where this villain and where this person is coming from. Now, this is a very dark and very serious campaign. I had a really good time with the campaign and I played it about five times already since it's been released. I would honestly highly recommend um, the campaign alone for this game. There are certain scenes in the game that I chose not to show due to it being very graphic and also I didn't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't played the game yet. Um, it's very gruesome and it tops the original Modern Warfare series in terms of controversy. There are certain parts of the game where I had to take a break for a few minutes just because of what was going on. I would recommend playing through the campaign a few times. It's honestly one of the best written campaigns in any Call of Duty and I highly recommend playing the campaign all the way through. Now, multiplayer is better, but also has a lot of issues that need to be addressed. When it comes to certain game modes like Ground War, Domination, and TDM, the spawning is just as bad as it was in the beta. In some cases, you will respawn right next to the enemy or where someone is aiming at, only to get shot in the process. It doesn't happen as often as it was in the beta, but it's still there and it's just as bad as before. Another issue I have are with the maps themselves. I love how every map looks and feels, but but the way the maps are designed allows for you to get shot in the back a lot. There are a lot of doors, windows, and corners and flanking routes to look out for, so this somewhat requires a lot of tactical gameplay, but it also encourages players to camp. This was another issue I had in the beta, where with a lot of players camping in certain spots. The map sizes are smaller than the ones in Ghost, but also can get chaotic at times with the kill streaks. The game does make you play cautiously, and there is a learning curve to it. Everyone now has infinite sprint and a sprint boost. The kill streaks in some places feels balanced, but it can also outbalance the game at times. Opening doors allows for players to think before they run into a room and pop a flashbang if they want. But there are a lot of windows and rooms for players to camp in in certain game modes. Again, map design has always played a big role in Call of Duty and its replayability. A lot of the maps should have been designed for 6v6 or 10v10 in mind, now, the comparisons between Call of Duty and Battlefield are still there. Ground War is fun, but my experience with it has somewhat been buggy and spawns are still all over the place. Another new game mode is Gunfight, which is honestly one of the best new game modes in Modern Warfare. It's very intense and competitive. I think people will get some fun out of it. It's very tactical and it requires a lot of communication and team play. It makes you think on your toes. One of the best features in Modern Warfare are the gun customizations. This has to be some of the best gun customizations that I've ever seen in a Call of Duty game. You can tweak and customize any gun or any weapon to your liking. There are so many attachments like scopes, stocks, barrels, and grips to unlock. Unlocking gear in the game is very reminiscent of the original Modern Warfare series. There's also an armory in this game. Now, from what I know, the armory is used for blueprints. There are specialized weapons that offer custom skins and attachments regardless of the level you're on. You unlock these blueprints by doing certain objectives and missions in multiplayer. After that, you unlock a special blueprint upon completion. Again, the customization in this game is endless, so that should keep players coming back for more in the coming months. In a lot of ways, Modern Warfare reminds me of Medal of Honor Warfighter 2012. From the gun customization to the campaign and some of the multiplayer, in my opinion, Modern Warfare has a lot more things in common with Medal of Honor Warfighter than it does Battlefield. Which isn't bad, Warfighter was tactical in some areas but also failed in map design and was plagued by bugs and glitches. For the most part, I had fun in multiplayer. I honestly think the lifespan of the game will be long. That's if Activision doesn't add any loot boxes or microtransactions later on. So far, they've said players will be getting battle passes and this will be free DLC. So I'm skeptical to see where the game goes in these next few months. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get into a lot of matches for Spec Ops without the game ending or crashing out of the blue but I was able to get around six matches, and for the most part, it was fun. 
Infinity Ward rebuilt Spec Ops from the ground up and made it more tactical and more team oriented. So you do have to rely on your teammates for getting to certain objectives and it is pretty hard. Unfortunately, if you're on Xbox or PC like me, you won't be able to play the survival mode that's exclusively on PlayStation 4. It does feel like something was missing from Spec Ops. The story in the campaign also continues in Spec Ops, which was also a nice touch. I seriously hope more levels, missions, objectives are added into Spec Ops in the future. I think a lot can be done as far as co-op in this game. Spec Ops is a really nice addition and I'm really happy that it was added back into the franchise again. This was honestly one of the best Call of Duty games that I played in recent memory and it's probably the best game that I've played since the original Modern Warfare series and that's saying a lot. This honestly felt like a very grounded, a very authentic uh, version of, uh, of war even though a lot of it was fictional. It reminded me a lot of Medal of Honor Warfighter um, from 2012 and Medal of Honor from 2010. Um, it brought back a lot of memories for me because I'm not really into Call of Duty. I'm not really into the series as much as I used to be when I was younger, but it just felt right. It felt like the right time to put this game out right before we go into the next generation of consoles. I highly recommend it. You know, I gave this game a, um, an eight out of 10. So anyone that's looking for a new game to pick up, I recommend this one. Who's your crew? Sergeant Gary. Kyle? They call him Gaz. He never said anything. John Octavish, SAS, sniper, demolitions, goes by soap. Why? It's classified. <laughs> there he is. Simon Riley. There's no picture. Never. Now the rest. That's neat to know. Unless we go a deal. What are you calling this task force? One for one.